down in the basement and here's our chimney. It's a double, it's a double chimney. This stove here is just the basement stove and it's got to clean out over there. Not very convenient because it's behind the stove. I don't know why anybody would do that. We did not design it that way. When we got the house, it was that way. This one goes to the one upstairs that we use all the time. And I want to check to see the flue is clean. And uh, there could have been some stuff that's fallen down on the bottom. Usually there is. And when I open it, it usually falls out. So all the creosote cracked open so I can just open it. It's already started to fall out. So I know it's got some stuff in there. So are we ready? Oh, look at that. Oh, yuck. So that's all just falling over the summer. We haven't used this the wood stove all summer long, so that just falls out as we go. So I'm just going to clean it out into my bucket here best I can. Oh, that's way up in there, too. But you can see it's all... Look at it. All powdery. Oh man, is that full. That's one good thing about this stove is that it cleans itself out pretty good. And we try not to burn wet wood. I mean, when you get wet wood, you get creosote really, ba really bad. So we try not to do that. It's filling up my bucket. in there. And I just had a bunch more fall. Look at that. Okay, I have this mirror right here that we use to look up the chimney to see that it's clear, it's cracked, because I looked in it and I cracked it with my ugly mug. So, let's see if I can tilt it. Yeah, it's still pretty plugged, so before we can start a fire, I'm going to have to clean that out as much as I can. If I can, I'll have to wait for Scott to get the brush out, and we'll have to run it up through there to clean it out. But I don't see any daylight whatsoever. Okay, I got this flexible rod, so it bends, and I've got extensions right there. So I'm going to try to stick that up. Get some more to fall. See if we can clean it out a little bit. Get some fallen. hole there. You see a little tiny bit in the middle of the mirror there. So it's still got some creosote. Okay, I got my rod up in there. Let's see if we can see. Oh, look. Oh, I see light. I see the light. Woo! There it is. Got it clean. Got it open. That's awesome. Got it dropped down there and I scooped some out. So I'm gonna get the rest of that out. And then we can go up and deal with the stove. Okay, now we're going to vacuum out the soapstone stove. We're gonna clean up the top. Get that all cleaned up. So it's nice and fresh for a fire.
I got the chickens a pumpkin and I do this every year. I get them a pumpkin, but this whole thing with carving a little face and the chickens making their own jack-o'-lanterns, I figured I'd go ahead and jump in on the bandwagon. So I'm just going to take a knife and kind of do my own little face, kind of sort of scratch it up a little bit, and then they'll go after what's inside, hopefully, and make their own jack-o'-lantern. Let's see what they do. What is that thing? Huh? What is that thing? These two girls here are troublemakers. They'll get started on it. They'll get it. They peck at everything. Get it, girls. No? So after a few minutes of watching them just kind of walk around and just peck at it a little bit, I decided I'd just cut the whole thing right open and just let them get in at the innards and the seeds and stuff and see if they would go after the rest of it later on. hilarious the chickens have carved the pumpkin that's what it looks like <laughs> they didn't do much of a job on it but I'm sure they'll attack it I've got it up here on their step so they'll probably whack at it a little bit more that's kind of funny though pretty cool looking pumpkin I'm gonna empty out my rain barrel can't leave the water in there over winter it will freeze up and break my rain catchment barrel, which we don't want to happen. So we're gonna take the hose off and then open those up and let her roll, let her empty. So the reason why I'm emptying out the rain catchment is because there's nothing to water out here anymore. I've got to pull out these tomato plants eventually. Um, they're still producing a little bit. So I did pull that one out because it wasn't doing anything. These still have a little bit on them. I'm going to let them go a little bit longer, but I'm not going to bother watering them. We're going to get rain here and there. And uh, got some in there. And that's all we have really to water. Um, I harvested, I had some tomato plants in that planter. I harvested all those, it was just a few. And uh, so we're just gonna pick what we can off this and probably just snack on them, there's not really much left. Then once we get rid of this, um, I have cardboard over here that I'm saving up that I'm gonna put on the beds to kill the weeds like there and there. The chickens have been in here and they've been dust bathing and working, but I really need to cut down this ragweed and these little prickly vine things and get rid of this stuff. And I'm gonna lay the cardboard all on here and I don't know what I'm gonna put on it to hold it down, but I've got plenty of, I don't know, rocks and stuff around, kicking around that I can just grab. Um, the chickens don't use this coop like to live in. They just like to go in there and hang out and stuff. So I could take some rocks from around it because that won't harm them. They stay in the big shed over there. So that's what we're gonna do with this. My rain catchment's still emptying over there. Over by Laverne.
Scott dumped our grow bags here in the compost area and we let the chickens just take care of pulling them apart. They've already started. This has only been out here about an hour and they've already knocked down a couple of them, spread them out, and then he'll come down with the tractor and turn them over, get it all mixed in with the dirt in the back. And that'll be some, I'll have to go through it and get rid of some of the rocks and sticks, but when we get ready, we'll be able to put that all in the, grow the raised beds and uh, That'll be good. There's some nice fresh dirt to put in there. After some hard work around the yard, we decided to get together with our son and daughter-in-law who came from Colorado and we went on a little ride around the area and had a little family gathering and had a nice time. So that's it for what's going on around here right now. We'll see you again soon.